The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our weekly market analysis and identifying potential opportunities here at Nadex. My name is Todd Rich. Uh, I am the head of education here at Nadex. And before I turn it over to Mr. Brian Caprice to run you through the analysis, I do want to mention that we at Nadex are having a little contest. Uh, we're going to have a little fun coming into the election. Uh, and you see it on your screen right now. It's a predict the Dow contest. And it's free for anyone to enter. Uh, and I want to encourage everyone who's on. In fact, I am going to send out the link uh, to everyone uh, shortly. And I'll continue to, uh, to send it out for anyone who's late in joining us. But the, the contest works like this. You fill in this. If you go to this website, join.nadex.com slash predict dash the dash Dow. You'll be able to put in your, your name, uh, your email address, and if you already have a Nadex demo account, please be sure to use that email. Uh, put in your phone number, and then where you think, where you predict the Dow is going to close on November 4th. Now, there are some, uh, you know, some basic rules to this. I mean, this is a very easy thing uh, to complete. If you take a look, on the form, there is this little terms and conditions. I'm actually going to go ahead and click over there and you'll see what the terms and conditions are. But uh, the, the highlights is that your entry has to be in no later than 4 p.m. Eastern on November 2nd. So you've got until November 2nd at 4 p.m. to enter. If you miss that deadline, you cannot play. There is only one guess per person. And the other qualification is you do have to have a Nadex demo account. Now, if you don't have one, uh, we do give you until November 4th uh, to actually get a demo set up. It's very, very easy. If you already have one, uh, be sure to use that email address. And the way it works is whoever enters this contest, who's ever closest to the pin, whoever predicts closest to the closing price of the Dow, uh, we'll win $5,000. If somehow two people either hit the target exactly or are equidistant, the, the winnings will be split. Um, you never know what's going to happen, but hey, someone out there or is going to win $5,000. Why not give it a shot? Predict the Dow, a fun little contest around the election. What's going to happen the day after? So uh, with that, I will. Uh, I mean, there's going to be a lot of communications coming out from Nadex emails, promotions. You're going to see this out there. I'm going to send you a link to this page so that you can uh, do it yourself. Uh, I'll, again, I'll send this link for anyone who joins late. Uh, but, you know, go for it. Go for the $5,000. Why wouldn't you? Um, it's, it's not a challenging thing to do to enter. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a challenging thing <laughs> to see who's going to win. All right, with that, I am going to turn it over to Brian. Uh, in fact, I just did. And Brian, I'm going to let you run with uh, this weekly market analysis and identifying potential opportunities at Nadex. All right, sounds good. I hit mute. Hopefully you can hear me. Yeah, I see the button, the button moving. All right, everybody, welcome to this week's current market analysis and identifying market opportunities. So hopefully you all get into that, um, the contest that they have going on. Uh, I'm definitely going to do it. Uh, one big thing that I, I asked Todd as soon as I heard, I was like, okay, when when is the last time, like, what's the, what's the deadline? Like, when can I get in on this thing at the last moment? Because if I do it now, there's a lot that can happen in a week. There's all kinds of things. I mean, imagine if you put your pick in now, and then, like, two days from now, like, stimulus hits, right? Obviously, it's going to move a little bit. So I'm going to try to target that one and snipe it as best as I can as well. So uh, fun little contest. Definitely get registered for that one when you can. So today... We're going to dive right in, um, you know, again, a little, you know, start a tad late, but I want to make sure we all get out of here at the same time today that we normally do. Uh, so let's go ahead and just jump right in. And uh, I can't believe it's October 27th already. It's just I, October, I swear, has just flown. Like, I thought September was quick. I feel like October was even quicker. Um, November, November is always one of those weird months with, like, Thanksgiving and everything else like that. And next thing you know, we're talking about 2021, which I think everybody at this point is in agreement. We're looking forward to. So let's go right in. 
So for those of you that are new that don't know me, uh, my name is Brian Caprice, uh, the president and CEO of Keep Trading Simple. So I have a little bit different of a, a trading style than many people out there. Uh, I'm a price action trader, which is, you know, not necessarily uncommon, uh, but I'm not a big indicator guy. Um, you know, when you understand the benefits and the, the pros and cons of indicators and things, I just, for my personal, you know, my personal trading, I just don't feel like they're necessary. So, you know, I rely upon, again, candle formation and then supply and demand, if you guys are familiar with that. Um, created a number of different uh, trading systems, uh, you know, a lot of them with Nadex. Um, again, they match well with the, you know, kind of the broadcast that we do. But I've been trading since about 2000. So I've seen a lot of ups, downs, left, right, sideways, um, you know, gone through two waves of the my 401k is now a 201k jokes. You know, I've seen many of those. And uh, again, the uh, accompanying jokes on the other side. So, um, you know, first and foremost, I am definitely, uh, I, I love education. Um, I love being able to share kind of my experience with you guys. And uh, every one of these presentations, I want to make sure that you guys get at least one golden nugget out of it. Um, again, something you maybe didn't know before or that you can take away or look at it differently. Uh, again, I want to make sure that your time is well spent with me. All right, so let me cover the disclaimers real fast. Um, the Nadex risk disclaimer for Nadex risk disclaimer for today is trading on Nadex involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Trading can be volatile and investors risk losing the cost to end of their transaction, including fees. The information presented within this presentation is for informational and education purposes only and should not be considered an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any financial instrument on Nadex or elsewhere. Now, any trading decisions that you make are solely your responsibility and that you are on risk. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Nadex contracts are based on underlying asset classes, including Forex, Stock Index Futures, and Commodity Futures. And uh, Nadex is a registered trademark of the IG Group. All right, so here's our agenda for today, you guys. Uh, you know, my repeat visitors. Um, you guys have seen this before. We're going to cover the upcoming news events. And really, as close as we are, I think we're within, like, what? I mean, I guess now we're, it's Tuesday, right? We're within, what, seven days of Election Day now? Um, we're just coming, I mean, we're coming right down to the wire, right? Uh, there's some important things we need to look at, some important news, um, things that will pop up in the next couple of days, you know, um, that we will definitely hear. And this weekend, it's going to be just nuts. And I think Monday is going to be, uh, yeah, I believe Election Day is the third, which would be um, Tuesday. Uh, I just have a feeling that Monday, there's going to be all kinds of craziness, right? I mean, if you remember the last election cycle, what happened a couple of days beforehand, we got, you know, all these releases about, you know, from the FBI and, and this, and it, it, I have a feeling there's going to be some fireworks again. So we've got to know where our levels are and be tight on those. Uh, we'll dive into indices. We'll cover Forex, and then we will jump across the commodities. Oil has just, you know, some of the, the levels we've talked about in recent weeks for oil have worked out well. I mean, oil is getting just blasted. Um, I asked one of my students the other day, I was like, hey, give me a, I'm not going to watch the debates tonight. Give me a summary. And um, <laughs> his, what he took from it was that, you know, the one presidential candidate said, I basically want to put an end to oil. I was like, whoa, that's pretty uh, out there. And I don't think oil, the oil industry was happy about it. And oil obviously reacted a bit. So, again, we're seeing a lot of these things come to fruition in the next seven days. So we'll, we'll check to see where our, our high quality levels are there. Um, let me bring this across uh, again. Uh, Forex Factory, you guys know, again, I can switch to daily effects. Forex Factory is the one I like because of the scanner at the top. Yeah, it, for me, it shows me where the most opportunity is. And again, if you listen to these broadcasts, although I am primarily a, a Forex trader at heart, um, I do look at other things. But Forex trading, and then you match up with something like a two-hour binary, it's like the ideal sweet spot for the time that I have available to be daily trading. Thus far this morning, we've had some very interesting news. Durable goods and core durable good orders, both of them blew out the forecast, which is really great, right? It's always great to see orders of new products and things like that higher than expected, right? They were expecting a sign of a decline, but that shows you that we're fired on all cylinders. You know, again, the, the, the manufacturers and things like that were not producing enough and people want more. That's a great sign. On the flip side of that, consumer confidence is not quite as high as it was before. That's a little bit scary. And I think a lot of that is not so much to do with the economy, but probably more to do with the election, okay? Uh, again, this close to the election, people aren't sure what's going to happen. And there's really no way to know. I mean, you know, look at the last one. All the polls that had, you know, uh, you know, Miss Clinton winning, hands down, blowout, worse than history. And that's the exact opposite of what happened. So, you know, people are kind of like, hey, I don't know what the polls say. I mean, I know what the signs say. I mean, I don't know what, what, what's going to happen. And that level of certainty obviously brings a little bit of consumer confidence uh, to the downside, right? Because we, just, we just don't know until it's done and it's over. We, we just don't know. So, again, that can hurt it. 
Uh, tonight we have some interesting data. And again, I, I preach this every single week. If you guys are not here in the Aussie at night, uh, you're really doing yourself an injustice. Um, you don't have to be a currency trader. You don't have to tell anybody you're currency trading. You know, you don't tell your family, like, oh, you can't do that. You can do whatever you guys want to do. These, these data points at night for the Australian dollar are just amazing. Nobody else is trading besides that, you know, in that Asian session. None of the other big boys really are out there. These, these results, I mean, again, you may say, I don't know what CPI is. Well, I mean, click on it. It's, it's, it's inflation, basically, right? It's a consumer price index. It's what you're paying, right? This data, and again, the forecast and how often they hit and miss, there's amazing opportunity, especially paired with the index tonight. And it's either going to be a big mover or nothing. And it's very easy to see that on the charts, all right? So that's what we got going on tonight. Obviously, tomorrow, um, we have some early morning data. We have our crude oil. It's not on this list, but that's at 10.30 tomorrow morning. We have the monetary policy reports and statements. This is like FOMC, but for Canada, right? And again, it comes in about 30 minutes before oil. So although it's not expected to change anything out there, them mentioning, you know, kind of statements that are a little bit more aggressive or, you know, again, any foreshadowing of what their central bank believes, what the recovery is going to look like for COVID can definitely be a firecracker for some movement. All right. As well as we should get an outlook from the yen as well. Thursday, we got some advanced GDP numbers. Now, last time you can see we had a minus 31.4%. Like, holy crap. 31% drop in, in GDP. Well, yeah, I mean, this is right smack in the middle of COVID, right? Quarter to quarter. Now we're one quarter forward, and it's like, wow, we just increased 32% GDP, right? Showing you that, again, you know, this is the impact of COVID when you have kind of a, the down and up, you know? It's amazing. A lot of these things, whether it be, and we've been following month over month, but month over month, quarter over quarter, you know, there's so much of these statistics out there that can be taken. I mean, Trump could say we've had the largest increase in GDP ever fighting back from the bottom. Right. And when some people will say, well, yeah, but I mean, it's because it was so bad before you could say that. Sure. I mean, his statement is not incorrect. It's just the way that you look at it, you know, much similar how to the prior president, you know, basically at the bottom said, look, we rallied the economy back. Well, yeah, because you took it over at the bottom. So, you know, you got to be careful and take all of these data points with a grain of salt. What's more important is not the actual number that is released, because like I said, oh my God, you could say this is the worst in this presidency, right, or the worst ever. And you can say, this is the best ever. And it's just, you know, again, rose-colored glasses. The important thing is, what does the market believe the forecasted number should be? Okay? The market will adjust based off of where it sees that the forecast should be. And when that is wrong, that's where news releases and news movement come from. So I don't really care that it says 32%. I didn't care that it said minus 31% before. And now it's actually supposed to be corrected to be even better. What I do care about is they expect 30, you know, 32 if they get 25, that's a disappointment. The economy is not going to be happy. Indices will probably drop. Okay. Unemployment claims also, and again, these have been, this has been a moving target, right? This has been a moving target. Look at this. We've had some misses with being overly positive, and oh my God, we were overly negative. And last time they expected it to go up again, and it didn't. It went way down. And this time it's supposed to be down again, showing a trend in new unemployment claims. So again, if that number is over 800, guess what? Another disappointment, we can have some market moving, uh, you know, market moving news. So another big thing that we have coming on Thursday, unemployment claims. Um, then we have the EU monetary policy. Right now, everything that you see over here on this chart or, you know, on this page with the EU or even the pound, which is not a lot right now, is kind of on hold right now. And the reason why is we're still waiting for, I guess, confirmation or, I don't know, agreement, maybe is a better word of the agreement of the exit terms for Brexit, okay? Everybody's like holding their breath, waiting for Brexit to come in. We've been waiting for like three weeks now, right? I mean, the deadline had passed. I was the 15th. They said, okay, we'll negotiate a little bit farther. There's a few things. One guy says we're far. The next guy says we're close. The next guy says we're far on some things. Again, they're just feeding us with these headlines. But that's kind of why the ECB stuff, um, you know, again, while normally I'd say, hey, watch this one, um, again, it's at zero. They're not going to pay people to borrow money. It just doesn't work that way. So, I mean, I don't expect any move in the main refinancing rate. It's kind of, a, I've got to look in for this to see if they say anything about what they feel recovery looks like. Um, I know there's a couple different European countries that are starting to see spikes, kind of second waves. France is kind of shutting back down again. Um, and again, COVID is one of those things we've never really seen anything like this before in our time. Um, really, nobody has any idea. I mean, we make a lot of guesstimates of what we feel is the best practice. Uh, but nobody really knows until after the fact that we have that like hindsight is 2020. So, you know, feels like they're shutting down again um, is what's best uh, going into the flu season. I mean, who, you know, who really knows what's going to happen, but 
any type of foreshadowing that they give us, not bad. Now, I will say Friday morning for any of you West Coasters or overseas traders out there, this is actually a pretty important number. All right, now again, big numbers, right? Big numbers versus what we saw before, not quite as large as the US numbers, right? But you may say, well, why does, why does Germany matter? Well, Germany is the main kind of industrial powerhouse behind the euro. All right. I mean, if, if for some reason, you know, the German industry just completely collapsed, the euro is going with it. Probably the entire European Union would break up if, if Germany faltered that bad and like, you know, bankrupted itself. Um, 7.3 is good, you know, um, dropping 9.7%, 7.3 doesn't bring you up back to where you were before that. Um, It's it, it, it's it's a it's a move in the right direction, but it's not the best. And if it, this misses, say this is coming at a five, um, that's kind of a bad foreshadowing for the for the European Union. So again, I would expect drops in euro dollar dropping, the euro yen dropping, um, the euro pound also dropping. So many different pairs that you can trade on Nadex uh, being pretty negative on Friday. Uh, and then we see CAD numbers again. CAD GDP uh, again. This is month over month, a little bit different than this quarter over quarter number. It was three last time. That was their big, and it's supposed to be moving up again. You know, Canadian uh, economy has had some really great data out there, but also provides a tradable opportunity for you. And then followed up by some manufacturing data and some, uh, you know, again, Chicago PMI. So uh, nothing else that I'm really concerned about. Then we roll into next week, Monday. Obviously, Monday is a big one, right? I mean, we have manufacturer data. ISA manufacturing PI is a big U.S. data release. Okay. Now, will it be overshadowed by any news we hear this weekend, um, you know, versus, you know, with the presidential election? Probably. So, like, normally, I would say that this is an A-plus release, 11 a.m. Monday morning, November 2nd. I said manufacturing PMI, A-plus, high, high, you know, high-impact news release. But I feel like this year, it's going to be overshadowed. I do think something will happen. Something happened last time, you know, and it caused a lot of types of chaos. I do feel like that we will get that chaos on Monday of some sort. I think the market could be – if the markets are going to hold and do one of those, like, middle of the night, like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Are we going up? Are we going down? Up, down, left, right? Sideways, what? Up, down? Like, there's just no way to know, right? If you guys remember last election, uh, I basically went straight down when I was like, yep, Hillary's running. And then all of a sudden at 2 a.m., it's like, wait, Trump could win this. And it went, and it was like a rocket ship. It took off. All right. So I, I feel like there are fireworks in order for next week. All right. Now, when we, got, when we you know, dial in next week, we will be right in kind of the middle of this. Um, East Coast will already have uh, started. West Coast will just be starting, I guess. Um, so again, we won't really have any true data of what everything's looking like, but we'll start to get an early feel and we'll be able to see what the market is doing. Like I said, as states start to close and things start getting confirmed, I mean, I mean, really, I mean, you know, the first couple of hours of voting, if they say, oh, they were on check to do this. Does anybody really believe that that's the way what, what's going to stay? Probably not. So, you know, like I said, a lot of fireworks from now till then the next seven days are kind of chock full of things, um, you know, monetary, you know, economic news release wise. But also, I think, um, you know, we're going to start seeing this thing, this this area here, this news and latest stories. It's going to start filling up with this or that or this. And, you know, look at this. Stimulus hope put on hold until after the election as you know, Senate leaves. So I told, uh, you know, my personal opinion on the stimulus was um, if they could get some type of a, an agreement or deal done, I felt like at this point it was kind of like buying votes. Like, we, we gave you this stimulus. You should vote for us. Right. Um, I'm not actually surprised that they're pushing it off at this point. And again, I mean, looking at the economy, I mean, look, at this is great numbers, you know, and, you know, I'm not going to please don't take this the wrong way. I know lots of people are still hurting out there because of COVID. Um, you know, my kids are virtual schooling. I feel like they're not getting as much out of it as they could be if they're in person. But if you look at most of the data points for the United States, a lot of them, almost all of them are positive. They're all good. Um, you know, throwing more money back out there, you got to question, like, is it needed? Like, do we need to keep throwing fuel into this fire or can it burn to get through the worst of this? Or, or, or are we through the worst of it? We don't even know, right? So I don't know. I feel like the data points, it wasn't necessarily needed as much. I felt like it was a, an election ploy more than anything else. Um, so I'm not really surprised by this at all that it'll hold off. Because then, you know, whoever wins is going to be like, well, we did this, we did this, we did this. And try to, you know, take, you know, claim credit for everything. Um, also here, you're talking about resuming Brexit talks uh, in London. Again, anytime you hear this B word right here, Brexit, um, absolutely just, an, it, it's huge, right? If they come to an agreement in the next seven days, there will be absolute major fireworks with the pound. Pound dollar will explode. Pound yen will explode. The euro pound will explode. That's a lot of market movement. 
And the way that we can trade that is by looking at higher time frame, um, you know, supply and demand zones right now. Typically, it moves there, and again, the market will position itself accordingly um, to be able to kind of take advantage of when that release comes out. Okay. I don't know if you guys are looking at knockouts and things like that, but the one nicest thing about the knockouts um, that are currently printed now is because we have such duration of length, right? Because they go for so long now, we could start setting our position Sunday with longer hopes and taking you know very small amounts of risk. And again, we get Brexit, these things can explode right past the end of some of these knockouts, all right? Um, so there's some nice risk to reward ratios uh, that are out there with knockouts as far as Brexit goes. And uh, I'll tell you right now, Brexit is not going to be one of those things that you can just wake up and say, oh, they agreed on Brexit this morning. Let me get in there and I'm going to make a trade on it now. It's going to be an explosion and then a retrace to take advantage of retail traders. That's what happened last time. Um, you know, pullbacks, if you guys are familiar with that parabolic retracement, I expect to see those type of uh, opportunities out there um, with, with that. All right. Um, Pfizer should be able to provide initial doses of vaccine by the end of the year. Um, that's interesting. Um, I'm curious. I'm going to see what what vaccine. I don't think it's going to tell us. No, it's just it's just on the conference call. Um, I don't know. It's I don't know. It's kind of one of those things. It's like yeah, they, they they could do this many doses. Yes, Pfizer is a very very large uh, pharmaceutical company. Um, oops, I keep doing that. But Pfizer is not a research and development company. So I'm curious to see whose vaccine it actually is, which company it came from, and what type of testing has been done on the vaccine first. Um, Again, a lot of these companies, they can produce as many vaccines as you want. Uh, there are already things stacked up out there where people are producing them. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is it's nice to say that they can do this, but uh, the question is, which vaccine, whose is it, what does the data look like? And again, we got to make sure we educate ourselves on these kind of things. All right. So with that said, that's the news aspect of this. Let's go across and dive right into charts. Like I said, I want to kind of keep on focus here. And we're going to start off, whoops, not with gold. We're going to start off with NQ. All right, so I'm going to go a little bit higher of a time frame. So last week, last week we had, had we had set up a trade here. So let me uh, put my timer on here. So here's where we're sitting right now. Last week would have been the 20th. All right, so we were sitting back over in this level, uh, right in here. And we were talking about having two kind of possible entries. One here, and I guess you guys couldn't see this one. Actually, we did have that one last, last week. I think it was in the hour. Uh, yeah, it was right here. Um, we had talked about looking at this level, this drop, this basing, and this drop back down again. And since that time, uh, on the, 20, the 20th, we got one entry here. We ended up getting a second entry in that level to profit. And again, it ended up hitting, dropping, hitting again, and dropping again. Now we've been kind of stuck in that same level, all right? Since that time, we put another couple areas of sellers in, and we've got a nice push off this 11,686. Um, dropping it down to the lower time frames, you can see from a – Supply and demand area, one of the things that we'd like to look for is very, very strong movement from levels, from reversals, right? So we had an area up here, and we hit it, and it dropped. We hit it, it dropped again, and you can see it pushed right back into that level. And then look at this explosion to the downside, okay? So for me, what I'm looking for, and again, this is an approximate level. This is ECN-based data, so it's, it's a little bit off from the indicative values of Nadex. Uh, but again, the way you would draw this is, uh, two things. One, you can use the top of the red body back here, and this is on uh, 1023, right? Um, or you can use the bottom of the red candle here on the the, the rally, the base sideways, and then the collapse, right? Um, whoops. But I would be looking for approximately down here in the 11667. Right now, you can see we haven't had a lot of conviction, right? A lot of sideways movement back and forth. And on the 30 minute, you can see huge push down and kind of just eh, back and forth back and forth and like oh good bad good oh no no it's up here and then oh another spike and then we're pushing back down again so it's been having a lot of problems all right now for me what i'm looking for on this one is i'm looking probably on a lower time frame i'm looking for price to come up into this range and, and you know and kind of look for kind of a, a round off or a kind of rollover from this point uh, a couple ways you could take this with a confirmation uh ways that i would look to take this all right um, right now, being that it's 12.25 in the afternoon Eastern, uh, we're kind of in lunchtime right now, right? The way that this is reacting and kind of bouncing back and forth, one potential way to play would be late in the afternoon. If we can finally get a really nice push up, and again, not sure we're going to be able to get that. But if we can get a nice push up into this level, again, going for some type of an end of the day type collapse, right? Everything up, 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 I don't know, like 2 o'clock, 2.30, boom, roll it back over. It could be one way. Um, another thing too, is if we're unable to get there and we just kind of go sideways, this is a level that I'd be looking for tomorrow. 
okay, with some of the, the, the positive news out there. Um, again, the market is going to be extremely sensitive at any type of news headlines that either the candidate makes with this many days to go. Any big poll or any big news broadcast that starts talking about it's going to be landslide this way or landslide that way. Um, again, take all that with a grain of salt, but uh, it's one of those things that the market will react accordingly to it. Um, so again, looking for rollovers. Where we would go long, um, I think if we go up to an hourly, um, you can see that we have some levels down here. And we talked about this last week, that the 11,248 is, is a level that I can see being a decent kind of um, you know bounce point, but I need to see a confirmation. I need to see it hit this level, go into a bit, pull away, and then when it pulls away, I'll, I'll grab it on the pullback, right? If it's just a punch down like this, if it just punches down and out, um, I won't be able to get into this position, but I'm looking for really a confirmation bounce, okay? Now, I'm going to take this up one step higher, and again, excuse this, there's a lot of stuff on here, a lot of numbers on here. Um, but one of the things I want to make sure that we talk about is, where are the largest of levels, okay? Because again, election-wise, there's this contest, you know, if I give you guys a number and it hits that number and you guys win the $5,000 and I don't, you have to share. Um, but areas that I'm looking for is potential areas of, not a balance, but areas where I could see price pulling to, right? Obviously, in seven days, can we punch down in this 11,248? Yeah. Yeah. And this is a level we've had some people, you know, some, some issues with. Again, buyer stepped in here, buyer stepped in, buyer stepped in, and then launched it, right? Launched it. So I think this is one potential area. And again, maybe if we're sitting down here, we could start getting a bounce off of that for the election. A big one I'm looking for, though, is this 10,728. Okay, the 10,278. And again, I'm kind of looking for if we're kind of floating around here. I mean, if we break this level, we, remember, we had a Harry Potter in here at 11,126. Um, looking for this to kind of push lower. Uh, this is an area where I could see some bouncing. And again, on a daily, you can see uh, it's hard to tell on that one. A little bit too much there. Um, it's here. It's going to be hard to tell on this one because we have so many different smaller time frame stuff. Anyway, this is an area where I could see us getting a small minor bounce uh, back up again. Um, but I want to see what the rest of the week, like I said, I think polls, news releases, I don't know, tax talk, plans. Um, I don't know. There's a lot There's a lot that can happen in the next couple of days. But I think a bounce off 11,248, uh, another potential bounce over here at 10, 280, uh, I'm sorry, 107.28 uh, down here I think is a decent one. Again, that's a four-hour kind of basing level pop to the top side. Um, in the likelihood... I mean, like in in the you know in the chance that it, it is a and and still, you know, president uh, situation next week. And again, we will talk from now till then. Um, again, me, you know, it could be it could be one of those morning things or polls start switching or something comes out in the next couple of days, like last election, that really starts to sway public opinion. I do think we need to get our um, you know we need to, we need to put our rocket ships on because I do think with that type of data, I do think we will get punches higher as well. Okay. Um, areas where there could be shorts in here, 11,918, as well as the, um, the 12,203. Um, any of the small ones in here I wouldn't mess with. I would only look at four-hour charts and above to find kind of areas where these spikes are going to stop, if that makes sense. All right. Uh, NQ will be pretty responsive to it. Now, S&P overall, kind of the same thing, right? I mean, there's no trend in here. It's just kind of basic back and forth. I think this week on an intraday level, um, I think we kind of focus on the 30 minute. Um, 30 minutes not going to work. It's going to have to be 15. Um, I think either of these levels, top and bottom, are decent for bounces. Again, you guys can see we had a base, it pulled up, it dropped, and then boom, really strong push. That level's coming in here at 34.33. Uh, and, and vice versa on the bottom side, this is a decent level of uh, basing. I, I like it. I like that it was a very strong drop, one candle of base, and then it rocketed its way back out of it. I think either of these, and remember, I've, I've talked about the curve in recent weeks, I think either of these two areas are, are decent bounces. Um, ideally, the best way to play these, though, and again, you can see we really have no momentum at all right now. Either of these top and bottom, in my opinion, um, I do like knockouts for them. But if we can coincide with one of these two areas at maybe an 8 to 10 or 9 to 11 binary in the morning, I think would provide great opportunity. Okay. Listen to what I just said. If we can catch a knockout, and the knockouts, I'm cool taking these really at any time because, again, they have that fixed level of risk in there. But if we can grab a two hour binary, or the 8 to 10 or the 9 to 11, close, and again, early, early morning, I'm talking about like 8.15, 8.30, or at like 9.15 before the U.S. market open, I think there are some opportunities to take this long or short to play this kind of indecision with the actual election itself. So I think either of those two are fine, all right? Um, going across to the Dow, 
Dow kind of the same thing. So this is doing some bouncing, right? The Dow is a bit different, right? Where the other two have more or less stabilized, the Dow is also starting to come back down. But, I mean, this is what we look like. The Dow had been much, much higher. The other guys were back in the middle. It pushed lower, and you can see on a four-hour here, the 27, 27.5 is an area that we were watching out for to the downside. So, as you can see, we've taken some minor bounces here. Uh, what I was looking for here was uh, really a decent level that we can take some shorts off of, right? So there's a gap here, and, and this is a level that's not horrible, kind of up here in the 28,250 area. Um, not bad. I mean, this level here, not so much. Not really interested in taking it. Right now, in looking at this, I would have to say it. The big question for me is which one of these two levels can actually provide some kind of slowdown, like, you know, put the brakes on a little bit of this kind of uh, decline, right? Um, I mean, on the four hour, we can see we're just collapsing. I mean, very, very strong, took a bounce, didn't even make it back up to where sellers, and it's already starting to roll over again. So, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, this level here, this 27, 27, 8, is probably the, 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 the target for like the next two days. Because um, again, you can see this white box, there's just not a whole lot in there. Um, and, and, and kind of what I'm looking at, and again, I'll move this so you guys can see it. If you look to the left right here, again, one of the things about price action is reading candles, looking at the wicks, looking and comparing them to the candles around them and how they're formed. Are the, are, are the wicks or shadows long or short? What does the body look like? How does it how does it compare to what kind of the ATR for that time frame is? Um, there's a lot of different things. This pattern here where there's a straight up with only a little bit of a hiccup, this box right here is an area that I'm looking at that once it breaks through and establishes, I'm looking for this to be a quick drop back down, right? And that's bringing us kind of dropping us to this level here, uh, down here at, at 26, 66, six, sorry, 26, six, 26, 766, um, if we punch through. And again, that could be one of these big candles. Um, yeah, so what we use to enter it, I think, is going to be the big question. Um, again, you can go on the hour, you can see that this is where that piece is. So one way to look at this is, again, you guys have all you guys all know what the Harry Potter trade is at this point. Um, it's setting up something along these lines here. And again, the one to three risk to reward ratio based off of using that as your price level, uh, as your risk level, is fine. Even your one to five is, probably, is not really looking that horrible at this point. And I think it'll be a quick jolt through to the downside. So again, this is uh, when you're breaking new levels, again, using Harry Potter's, not always the best opportunity to place a knockout because, again, remember, knockouts are, you know, stopping you out in one of the two directions and then re-kind of print themselves. Where a binary, it can go pretty far, but then continue to push lower and lower and lower. Uh, not the end of the world. It gives you a little bit more leeway when things are continuing. Uh, but, yeah, check those out for the indices. So as far as um, currencies go, okay, I'm going to bring this back up and, and kind of move these over. Remember, these boxes, if you're wondering, why do you have these boxes here? Uh, these are the curve boxes where I'm kind of using as kind of a, an intraday range um, or kind of a longer term range. Hold on, I can't select this one. Uh, right there. All right. Usually, and basically, what it is is in the top of the curve, I'm looking to short, bot you know, bottom of the curve, I'm looking to buy. So we're still sitting, you know, obviously on the four hour, very, very high in the curve. We've kind of bounced back and forth. We've had kind of sells in here. And you can see we ended up triggering here and down and got front run down, got close, down again, back over. We're getting there again up into the 7146 area. Remember, there's Australian news tonight. So this is one of those cells that, depending on when we hit that zone, where we are for the news, for me at least, this could be an opportunity for me to take a binary short before the actual news release. Um, in kind of the assumption that, again, the market always knows, the market adjusted itself, it kept the price high, looking to turn this around and short it. And again, it would require some type of negative sentiment um, in the price of the Aussie. But I like the way that it's set up. I like the fact that it's kind of, a, again, consolidating, but also forming a great channel. I mean, we had it marked here, popped it down, popped it down, popped it down, again, kind of over here, and it's still having some problems to the downside. So, you know, that'd be a short around 71.46. And, um, oops, not that. Targets approximately over here at 71.50. Okay. Just like that, the Aussie Yen as well. And you can see the Aussie Yen has been a bit more boring, right? We're kind of at the, I don't know. I mean, I've had tops and bottoms on this one for a while. Um, and it's just not that exciting, right? Just not that exciting on the lower time frames. This is not a trending market. And again, it's, you know, it swings. You're talking about a 40 pip swing back and forth. So um, I guess it should, it does look more like this, but you're not, you're not having really like a ton of strong kind of pushes one way or the other. With it being in the middle, you do have to use some of the lower time frame based levels. Uh, and again, you know, if you're going to draw kind of a, you know, the top and bottom of this one, oops, not that, hold on, hit the wrong button, delete that. 
that. I was trying to get to this one. You can see this is kind of what it's looked like, right? Here's a, here's your bottom. You establish a top, 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 bottom, 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 top, top. Kind of stuck in the middle, right? Top, almost bottom, and then we're kind of smack in the middle. So, uh, again, definitely a sideways channel. Um, some decent opportunity, you know, being about 40 pips each day. Um, but right now, we're kind of in the middle of, kind of the middle of the curve for me. So, it's kind of like in a, a strange place. Um, I do like shorts below 74. I do like a short up here at 75.12. Um, the way to play this one, again, if you're new to trading the Australian data, um, go look at this one tonight. Look at all 30 minutes and look to see where we're at. Right now, it's not a great place. But if we can be in either of these two levels, uh, when I say either of these two, I mean the level down here at, at approximately 74.25 and the level approximately here at 74.40, I think either of those are, are, would be decent levels that we've got to take a long off of. I know, now you know some of some will say, hey, wait, but you just said short on the other one. Yeah, if price moves there, I don't know where it's going to go in the next eight hours. Uh, like I said, I, I don't have a crystal ball. No, no person has a crystal ball, but there are areas where if price comes here, I'm, I'm willing to do this. And if price comes here, I'm willing to do that also. Um, if price does nothing but go straight up, it doesn't matter what these two numbers are because it didn't meet what I was looking to do. It wasn't an if this, then that. If we push up into, say, this range here by tonight, right? up into 7483, I would also be looking to get into a some type of a binary or and again, maybe even a knockout back to the downside. Okay, and again, why? Well, I just mentioned the curve to you. This would be in the upper quadrant right here, right? This would be in the upper 33% of the curve, right? Actually, I guess that's too much. It would be here. That's in the upper part of the curve. We've seen sellers step in again. I'd be willing to take that right back down to the downside. So again, for me on that one, um, again, I think some knockouts would be uh, well warranted up in that area. Now, looking at your again, so as I mentioned before, the euro yen has had a couple different positions in here. Uh, if you guys remember, uh, again, this chart is going to be busier. I was trying to help you guys and, again, help my students as well. Got to realize, being in the United States, uh, I'm an East Coaster. You guys know that I live in Maryland, right? It's very easy to think that the world revolves around New York City. I know everybody from that central time zone says, no, 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 Chicago. Chicago is the center of the world. No, it's not, right? In the United States, New York is considered the financial hub, right? But, but... If you ask anybody else in the rest of the world where kind of the financial center is, it is considered London. Okay, when the London Open happens, that's considered the start of the trading day in the world. Okay, I know. I mean, I mean, America, nothing but uh, nothing but love. And I know we feel like it's when the you know the, the U.S. stock market opens, but it's not. It's when the U.K. market opens. These blue dashes and things like that, they are the movement that occurs at the European Open. Okay, and then same thing today. Let's see, um, where here's 12, and I, I can just look at it. Here's 3 o'clock, and there's the 7 o'clock, um, right there. That's all the movement. I, again, you're talking about 65 pips. And you may say, hey, what, is the, what, what does that matter? I don't know what 65 pips are, okay? Pips are just the smallest increment of movement. Not the smallest, but it's basically the increment. It's like pennies, right? When we talk about a stock moving, you know, pennies, a pip is, is similar to what that is, right, of, of importance. Go look at the Forex contract specifications on Nadex and look to see what the strike differential is, basically meaning what the difference is between one strike to the next strike to the next strike to the next strike. And again, in just a two-hour period of time here, from the 3 to 5 o'clock time frame, you're talking about 43 pips worth of movement. Go look at how many binaries of worth of movement that is, and then again, that's why I keep highlighting these for people, right? Everybody always says, I got a job, I don't have the time, I got to do it at night, I got to do this, when's the best time to trade? That's why I keep marking them off on this thing, because I want you guys to see how much potential there is at the London Open, okay? Uh, and then again, a lot of these, we have London Open and then just flat lines for the U.S., right? <laughs> London Open, flat line for U.S., London Open, flat line for the U.S., right? So there's great opportunity in this one. With Brexit and everything else, there's going to be continued, you know, continued movement. Um, as far as trading opportunities go on this one, uh, again, you guys can see we have a big green area down here. Um, this one is a little bit harder. Like I said, this one has a, an ETR that has been shrinking. I do like this area down here at 123.08. I do feel that we will get probably some type of a bounce and a retracement. Top side, obviously, the 124.22, we talked about it last week. It ended up triggering there, went all the way down. It's past the 1 to 5 at this point. So that's probably the first level I'd be looking for for selling. Uh, 124.61, also another level. For the most part, though, this is basically channeling. And as I said, everybody's basically waiting to see what the end result is going to be for Brexit. Are they coming to agreement? Are they not coming to agreement? Um, so, again, it's kind of one of those, like, it's 
I don't know, excuse me, for lack of a better word, it's like a waiting game. Uh, but right now, I think bounces off 123 is probably pretty decent. Now, pound yen, as I mentioned, this is the one that's waiting for an explosion. Now, I have some kind of near term and some um, long term, not long term, but short time frame analysis and large time frame analysis on this one. All right. 137.66, 135.83, I think are decent intraday levels. Okay. Decent intraday levels. Um, you know, bringing it down to a 30 minute, let's see. Again, you can see we're just literally boxing sideways, top and bottom, top and bottom, top and bottom. Um, those are the two best areas that I think we have. Neither of those two areas, though, will hold for Brexit. Okay, so again, this is kind of just our normal kind of waiting patiently, waiting for it to come to an area that we've seen great. Again, look at this great movement off, you know, really led to rally. It was is where the gap started from. Top wise, again, has not barely, barely been tested. Right, very, very clean entry. And again, there's one here that's not bad as well. Um, if you're looking for something tomorrow morning, again, this is probably not a bad area, the 136.93. Um, but none of these small time frame levels are going to hold up to something as large as Brexit. Okay. When Beck Brexit gets agreed upon, this thing could be a 250 pip mover on this currency pair. Okay, it will be huge, and people unfortunately don't know when it's coming. So, if we can get to either of these two levels, top and bottom, or even some of these minor ones, I think that this is probably. And like I said, I don't know when Brexit is coming, but if you could, if we could get a trade somewhere close to one of these kind of two extremes, and and have it match up with a knockout with low risk. It kind of gives us a few things. One, it gives us kind of an intraday trade setup, right, with a couple of days duration, depending on what day you place it. The other thing, if there is something as big as Brexit and it launches it out the other side, here's the thing. Think about it. If you get into a knockout with, say, I don't know, $15, $20 worth of risk, right, how much potential is there on the other side, right? a lot more than what you would get with a binary. Because if you get into a binary with $25 or $20, $25, so you can make 80 bucks, that's it, right? You can make more on the knockouts because again, they have that wider kind of breadth between the floor and ceiling, all right? Especially when you get them in low. So for something that's that explosive, kind of looking at knockouts for the pound yen, more or less for the rest of the week or until we hear about Brexit, okay? Uh, especially if we can get to these far extremes. So that's kind of, and again, it's one of these pairs that hasn't moved as much. You know, the ATR, again, look at this thing down here. You can see this was during the crazy Brexit time. And look at it now. It's trying to get as low as it possibly can because everybody's waiting for the big talk about Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. This was COVID, right? And look how big this movement was. Now it's kind of consolidating, chopping back. And look at this. The ATR is shrinking. It's struggling, right? It can barely breathe because everybody's waiting. Where is Brexit? Okay. Pound dollar. So pound dollar. Again, this is a level that we did talk about last week. And again, remember, and I get this question all the time, like, how do I know if a level is good? Like, why did you draw it there, right? I'm looking for simple. There was a, again, nice push up, grind, 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 a nice pop, a rest, like a little bit of a pullback, and then an explosion. Again, this is called price action. Well, it's given a couple different entries. One pop, two pop, three pops, and this one didn't quite hit today, but again, it still rallied higher. So right now for me on this one, again, uh, you know, there I do have this four times rule. You know, this would be a hit number four, so I'd be a bit more cautious. I'd want to see some type of a kind of confirmation bounce higher. But kind of what I'm looking for on this one is I'm more than looking for, you know, shorts here. Uh, if we can get up to this 31, 36, um, I'm looking for a short. Again, if we can get a break in a Harry Potter entry below this 29.82, but I'd be willing to take another long off this if I can get a kind of confirmation bounce. And again, confirmation bounce is the same pattern that we have in the Harry Potter. The breakthrough, the pullback, and then the punch, you know, the punch forward is, is really kind of what those are looking like. So for me right now, again, we're kind of in a small zone. We'll probably have a retracement. It'll probably suck back down to this level here. Um, uh, let me take this box off so we don't confuse everybody. Um, I, I would expect it to come down. I expect it to roll over from here. There's a couple of sellers here, but is it the best of levels? No, not so much. Um, and again, price that comes out, I expect this one to explode higher. I think that would be such a big boom for the pound. Uh, so again, if you do kind of like this level, this 129.92, uh, not a bad level to look for knockouts in, uh, as well as some of these lower levels down here based off of, I mean, really for the hourly year of these two, 29.05 is my favorite, uh, but I think this other level here at, uh, what, 29.42 is also a decent one. If we could time it correctly with a knockout, wouldn't be bad. Um, and again, for Brexit, um, I, I would love to be long before the Brexit call. Because um, like I said, if there's no deal, everybody's already planning for no deal. So there's no surprise there, right? Nothing will change if there's a no deal. But if there is a deal that is great for the UK, 
that's going to pop this. You know, again, I'd love to be long one of those, and I think knockouts are the way to do it. Looking at your pound. All right, so your pound, you can see that, let's see, we're sitting here right now. Last week, where we were sitting right here, over here. So you guys were unable to see this. This was one of the ones I put together with my guys. I had mentioned that I was looking for bounces off 9016. As you can see, we ended up getting those bounces. We had a Harry Potter drawn, but we never got the Harry Potter entry. But, but we did get the confirmation long entry back up. Okay, so at this point, I still think that we need to be focusing on a break of 9016 to the downside. Again, remember, it's got a breakthrough, pull back. Again, it's got a breakthrough base and then pull back to give us the entry south. Or if we can come back down, basing sideways again, take a confirmation bounce where it comes down at bases, it punches higher, retests, and then and then again, get long for the takeoff. For me right now on this one, I have alerts up here set at 9101. I think there's another decent short there. I do expect price to push back down to this level, and I'm kind of waiting to see what it does in this level. If it bases, I'll be looking more for a short entry. Um, if, again, it takes a quick bounce, I'll be looking at that level. And again, downside, 9016. Um, the top of that zone is uh, sitting up here at 9027. So you're talking about, what, 11 pips? So we're not talking about anything major on this one. But I do think, uh, you know, again, whether a, a confirmation bounce high, a Harry Potter south, um, and, and, and again, that's kind of what I'm looking for based off of this level. All right, and remember, I didn't say it yet today, but I'm also going to do it now. There, here's your Harry Potter. A break, a pullback, and there. So this, and again, flip it upside down, then you got the confirmation bounce on the top side. All right, Euro dollar. All right, so your dollar is also another one of those ones that has been trending more or less sideways. Um, we're sitting here right now. We were sitting right here last week, right? So we were talking about getting short at 118.87. We didn't make it. It made it all the way up and then kind of rolled over. Um, we talked about getting long if we could get down to 117.75. As you can see, so like last week, we were talking about playing really in this range, right, from here to here. It, it, it missed it here. It missed it here. And then again. It didn't even come back up and touch the 118.69. And it, it, it barely, it literally this morning, it finally came down and touched this level. So it's kind of in a consolidation pattern. And it's kind of the same thing, right? We're waiting to hear what's going to happen with Brexit. Brexit doesn't really affect the European Union as much. But obviously, it is linked because it is a, you know, somebody leaving and what is a trade deals and an agreement and things like that going to look like. The euro dollar is going to be on the hook later on this week with the German-based data, the GDP number. So, uh, you know, I expect some movement. But right now, I mean, literally on the hourly, I mean, we're not much different from where we were. You can see we're high on the curve, so we are kind of more short-biased, right? I'll move these over, get this out of the way, right there. Um, but again, anything up here, we're looking for shorts. You know, obviously, we have these kind of intraday levels here we're looking for. Again, they are in the middle. I do like the 117.12, the 116.98. Down south, as far as punch is higher. Um, right now, if I had to pick, I'd say, listen, we got a high, a lower high, a lower high, and we're kind of breaking through the bottom. I'd be looking for this to kind of consolidate down and then start to crash um, through the 117.75. Dollar CAD. So, Dollar CAD, we came from high in the curve to back in the middle. All right. So, a couple small intraday levels here that I was looking for on this one. Um, let's see, this is where we are right now, right here at um, 31.54. So being that we were in the middle, I, I wouldn't say I really love it. I mean, there wasn't really great kind of pullback entries that I typically like to take. Um, I think, let's see. 3120, I think, is a decent level. The zone formation was a little bit big for me. Um, it is about, I mean, it's 12, but when I say 12, I, you know, big, I don't mean just the number of pips. I mean, the way that it was formed, the, the, the size of the body of the candle and kind of its confirmations. Now, it's been confirmed twice that there are buyers here. Obviously, here once, right? It blasted it through, and then it parabolically retraced back. And then what did it do? It did it again, and it hasn't retraced. So I do think at this point I am probably more bearish this position. Uh, bearish bias, it is in the middle. And, again, that's the only one thing that's kind of like, eh. you know, I, I can see it grinding its way down. I'd be willing to take a long, if we can time this one at, like, a 10 o'clock reversal in the morning or for some of the bigger news releases or maybe even for oil tomorrow, I'd be willing to take some type of a long off this 20, uh, 3120. I know I mentioned a lot of pairs that I like the two-hour binaries. CAD is not one of them. For some reason, the CAD strike differentials are bigger than some of the other currency pairs. So this one, I'd kind of do with a binary, a little bit farther out of the money, maybe like $15 to $18 worth of risk out of the money. Um, or knockout if we can end up find, you know, getting it. But I think 3120, or even if we can, you know, if we come down, again, this is the third hit, and base, 
wait to get long down here until 3094. I think that's a much better option. Now, dollar Swiss, dollar Swiss, I'm, I, the Swiss I'm kind of mad at. Um, let's see. Uh, I'll tell you guys in a second why I am. Uh, we're sitting here right now. Last week, we were sitting right here. All right. We had mentioned 9097. I'll move this out of the way. Again, we were sitting right here last week. Told you guys 9097. It's a big zone, but it was worth a short. As you guys can see, we tagged it this morning and pushed back down again. We went right back down to this area of interest. Now, you guys could not see the area of interest. It was just slightly below where we were. Uh, again, this is one of the ones I do with my guys, but you can see it turned out to be the great profit, a uh, great profit target. Um, either way, again, you guys can see this box. It's it's a demand zone, but that's where your profit target would have been. And you can see it's having some problems. Right now, I would say that we are kind of sitting in the middle of the curve, right? We're kind of sitting. If this is the curve, I'd be looking for intraday trades. I'd be like, hey, listen, we're right in the middle right now. We're at 33. percent You know, we're kind of in no man's land, right? I mean, here, obviously high, it slammed right back down, right? Here. We touched low, boom, right back up. And again, it kind of based sideways. Being in the middle, I don't really have a bias one of, you know, in either direction. So I kind of need to wait for, you know, again, the same area here, um, 90.97 up top, and eh, not the best of levels, but probably somewhere down here in the 90.37. Right now, it's kind of a no deal for me. Um, this one probably won't have as much movement this week, um, but again, top or bottom channeling, I think, is the way to look at it. Now, dollar yen. All right, so dollar yen. Dollar yen, uh, let's see, we are here right now, right? Last week we were sitting right, right here. Uh, no, actually right, hold on, let me take this off. Right here, okay? So I drew the Harry Potter, and the, again, I'll bring it up to an hourly. Um, I drew this first last week, and we've been talking about this 105.01 to 104.91 for quite, quite a bit of time now, right? And I said, listen, we need to get a Harry Potter entry. If we get a break, look for a pullback. OK, and again, you can see the pullback here, drop it based and then it pulled back. It's easier to see for new traders right now uh, on this lower time frame. You can see we came down, we based in the level, which is step one, right? When we see a level that's been hit multiple times, we're looking for a base in the level. Here's your base. There's your drop. There's your base. There's your pullback. And bam, there's your Harry Potter trade. OK, now, once that occurred, there has been a couple other trade entries in here. Again, this level that formed right here, this would have been a zone itself for any of my traders out there. You guys know that this was another one that you guys could have taken. Lower risk on there. And again, it was a tested level. Boom, we collapsed again. And again, same level. Boom, it's collapsed again. So big question is, what the heck do we do with this now, right? It's pushing lower. And as you can see, like all week, I've been telling my traders, I'm like, hey, I can't delete this. Got to save it. Again, perfect example of a Harry Potter trade for new people, old people. Again, we've been talking about it forever. Now I think we need to shift our focus down and we need to be focusing on this level down here. Okay, and this level is at 104.15. Um, this is probably a day or two worth of movement to the downside. Um, interesting thing about the dollar yen, okay? Typically the, the dollar yen is, is kind of mirroring or kind of following the overall indices, okay? One of the things about, um, Obviously, the current president, you know, he's been on the dollar strength and then dollar weakness trend, you know, back and forth. He's actually been on the low interest rate thing for a while, again, which is considered a weak dollar play. Um, I don't feel, I don't know that either president or either candidate necessarily wants to raise interest rates, okay? Um, Larry Kudlow was always a very big, you know, king dollar, king dollar, king dollar. He likes a strong dollar. Um, I just don't feel, I feel, and the reason I say this, and again, this is where I'm getting my rationale for this one. I just jumped it up to a daily. Look at this ATR. Okay, the ATR is now lower, just slightly, than what it used to be before COVID even happened. We're talking about 46 pips, right? There's 24 hours in the day, right? 12 and 12, 24 hours in the day. This one does not even move. I mean, we're talking about 48 pips. We're talking like two pips an hour, right? It's not, it's not a big mover. It's just not a big mover. So it hasn't given us, oops, not that one. Uh, it hasn't given as much trading opportunity as I would like. And that's kind of the one caveat on this one. Again, it took us a week, week and a half to be able to get this entry in. I think right now, and again, there's some small ones. I think my best recommendation for you guys would be, um, again, wait for this one to come back down to this, this level here, right? Which would be on the four hour. Right, would be a one of four fifteen, and again, we can take a confirmation bounce. Um, if we can hit this on like a Sunday night open, Monday morning type thing, I would love to take 
uh, you know, a knockout where I have five days worth of duration off of that one. I'd be cautious with the binary because we just don't have as much movement. Um, and that's, that's the one caveat on this one is we have just such a small ATR. It's going to take a few days, so I think we need to be thinking long duration, just not short duration on this one. Okay. All right, let's jump over to gold. So gold, uh, gold is actually in a spot right now. So we're sitting here right now. Last week, we were sitting right here for gold. And we talked about kind of being high. So it did go a bit higher. And we had levels up top that we were looking for. Um, again, we weren't looking for a break here. We had a level up here. And the zone that we had been talking about forever, just, and again, I'm going to say this with a caveat. It just barely got tagged, right? It did go into the zone. Again, we had this one marked off. It just barely went in there and broke this, what, 91.31. It's created a good level since that time. It gave us another base and has pushed lower. But here's what gold overall looks like, okay? Gold has been kind of stuck within this, I don't know, 40 cent range for quite a long time now. Now, here's the, here's the four hour, okay? Remember, by all definitions, what every single expert tells us, this thing is going to the moon, right? It's going to $10,000. It's going to catch Bitcoin dollars, right? Because again, it's gold. There's going to be 8 million things of inflation. There's stimulus everywhere. Money's being thrown around. Well, what did we read earlier about stimulus, right? There's no stimulus coming till at least after the election, which again, we've, we've seen this push down. It's kind of pushing back up again. With no stimulus kind of on the horizon, you need to go back and trade this on a technical basis. Um, we've already had this level up here, this 90, you know, this 1910. It's been turned around and pushed back down again. It got front run. It's been front run kind of twice again. We're kind of in that level right now. Um, I think there's two levels. Again, if you're looking for more of an intraday position, I think the, nine, the, the 1910, I think, is decent. Um, again, another thing up here around the 1926, I also I think is not a bad level. Um, I do have some levels higher, again, based off of like four-hour time zones. But those would be more areas where I could see price spiking to. And they say, hey, stimulus is out. We're giving everybody $5,000. Like, that's the type of, like, levels that would stop. And, again, that's not happening, guys. Don't quote me. that, that that's, They're not going to do that. But, again, if those pop up into those 1951s, those, there's some big levels up top. But for intraday stuff, you know, 1910, I think, is decent. 1926, 1931, these are all kind of rollover points. Uh, and, again, if you can time them with a binary at the right time of day, I think they're not bad. Um, or even maybe a knockout for a couple extra days duration. Uh, silver is kind of the same thing. Nothing super exciting. Um, I've had a Harry Potter set up here. And again, you can see that it's it's based here. Hit it again, hit it again, hit it again. So I'm looking for a break of, what is this? Um, 2409, right? 2409, I think is a decent break. And again, I'm looking forward to overtake that area. The one to three risk to reward ratio is before a zone. So again, a uh, decent level for me that I am looking for this one to break before next week. Um, silver, obviously, again, if stimulus magically comes in in the next seven days, um, again, not counting on it. Don't think it'll be here, but by some miraculous, you know, thing, again, levels that I'd be looking for is probably the 2518. Um, I don't know if this is going to be enough to hold, but depending on the spike up into 2475 or 2518, I think either of those is a decent kind of rollover. Uh, last week, we talked about this kind of going down and ending the week here. It took a little bit longer, but it, 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 came, it came down and bounced right off the levels that we thought we were, you know, we were trying to get off of. All right, so silver is eh. Kind of a little tepid right now with um, what we can do. Uh, last but not least, let me go ahead and pull up oil for us. Everybody's favorite commodity. I have to say that. I don't know if I can say that. I, I, I guess I can say that. Um, here is what oil looks like. All right. So um, as you can see, oil has taken quite the fall from grace, right? Uh, let me bring this back up to an hourly so I can spread it out a bit more. There we go. So here's where we were um, on the 20th, right? Uh, what did I mention to you guys? We were looking for a Harry Potter break, right? If it just kind of came down to this level and based, right? This is the level down here between 39.25 and 39, right? We had mentioned that, hey, listen, we'd be looking for a Harry Potter type trade. Now, at first entrance, it didn't come in, right? It kind of came through and it punched. It came right back up. And I'll bring it to a 30 minutes so you guys can see it here, right? This is not the base that we were looking for. But we're still going to kind of hold firm with that level. So as you can see, here is that bottom line right? The, 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 the line here. And you can see the top of it would have been kind of up in this range. Well, it did go through and it all of a sudden became, went from bottom to top and punched lower. Uh, since that time, and again, we drew watch for this level here. It's probably a level that it's going to turn around. We've seen buyers there already in the past. And again, that was exactly where it rolled over. Now it's kind of an interesting position because again, we had levels here, it popped up, it hit it, it popped it again and hit it again. And again, these were levels that I drew for my guys yesterday. Um, and here we go. One, two, three, four is what magically broke through. And again, it's not magic. It's just, you know, that's four, four is the, uh, 
the most common time that it breaks through. One, two, three, and four broke. Now this little pullback here is kind of interesting. So we have a parabolic move this morning. Will it roll over and flip? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's kind of an interesting kind of spot. Was it a bit high? If it was a bit higher, right? If it was a bit higher, um, you know, I'm going to have to move this curve over. I'll just, let's see. Can I move this? No, I'm just going to move it. Um, no, I'll just delete it. Um, if it was just a bit higher, like, I mean, if we were talking like in here, I would love this for sure. I think this is decent, right? Very strong push down, a little chop back and forth, and then boom, right? We're close. But we are forming a level of some buyers sitting right down here. So that's the only thing that kind of leads me to believe that we need to be a bit cautious, right? Um, I do think there's probably a short opportunity here. It's going to depend what time of day that we get to this level. Uh, and again, a couple different ways we could play it, right? But I think there's a decent three to one in there. Um, in, in reality, I mean, I, I think this one could get back into this level or probably this level. Um, again, that brings it up to a four to one risk to reward ratio, basically meaning like you're, you know, you're, you're risking, you know, risking one to make four. You know, those are great odds uh, in your favor. So, um, yeah, it's probably about it. Um, I, God, I, just a bit higher, I would have loved it. But turning right here, it's like, is this going to roll and flip without us and leave? It may. It, it, it absolutely may. So there's not a whole lot we can do about those. But anyway, keep that on your radar if we can get back up into here into uh, 39.70, especially if we can get up to there before the oil inventory report tomorrow. Remember, that is at 10.30 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, there could be some decent trades. Um, if, we you know, if this retraces all the way back down into this lower level, again, drop down to your 30-minute time frames, maybe even lower. Look at your 15s. See what the overnight levels look like. See if there's a level like this or something that there's a very long body candle off of. That would be the way to play uh, kind of the uh, pre-oil news tomorrow. Uh, and again, make sure there's not too much premium in those binaries. If not, jump across the knockouts and go ahead and take it over there is what I'd recommend for that. All right. Hey, hey Brian. So that's all we have. Um, hey, wait, wait, Brian. Before you jump on, I've got a couple of questions I want to throw out there just so you can clarify because we've got some questions. Yeah. I want to make sure we get to them. Uh, one very right. easy question quickly. What charting platform are you using? Uh, do you like to use? Because uh, some people have asked. Sure. Um, I use a couple different platforms. Um, being a currency trader, I lean towards MT4. It's an open source platform. Um, it's just it's very very basic, but it links kind of into everything. Um, the one that you're looking at right now is TradingView. It's an online one. There's nothing to download. Uh, it's got a lot of bells and whistles. Uh, it's pretty decent. Um, like I said, there's ads and things like that you can pay for it to remove, and it gets a little bit busy in my eyes. Um, if you guys are new to trading, okay. Um, or new to Nadex in general, uh, the first thing, and again, I talk about currencies a lot if you're not familiar with it. Um, and again, I, guys, I, 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 there's no sponsorship or anything. IG's online charts are very nice. Uh, they're, very, they're, they're, they're good. I like them a lot. I used to use them in my broadcasts all the time. Um, but unfortunately, it was harder for me to get the indices and commodity futures data when I was doing that. So if you're looking for something for your currencies, Go over to you know, IGUS and open an account there. Their online charting is awesome. And if you're familiar with that, you can actually use a lot of that at Nadex charting as well. Yeah. Um, I know fact, I don't I'm use gonna, the Nadex platform, but it's there. Yeah, I'm going to mention a lot of the charting functionality that IG had has been ported over to Nadex. So when yeah. it comes to commodities and indices, uh, a lot of that functionality that IG built for the uh, – for the foreign exchange is now available on the Nadex platform. Um, also, I'm going to put out that plug because uh, I'm mentioning Nadex. Remember, predict the Dow. I've chatted that out to everyone. And then the one last question, because you mentioned shorter term trades and longer term trades. And I know Nadex has, we've got our five minutes, our 20 minutes, our mm -hmm. hourly, our daily, and then the weekly. When you talk about a longer term trade, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm assuming you meant, looking at the weekly choices or if it's early in a day, potentially a daily, um, a daily contract. Uh, but can you just kind of talk about what, what you look at when you say short term and long term, at least when it comes to Nadex products? Sure. Um, I'm going to drag in this because I keep telling everybody to go over there. Uh, this is Nadex.com contract specs. The way you find this, guys, is go over your, your products and markets, go down to markets. And that will list everything. And then see how you have your contract specifications. Go in here, and this, this is the best way to explain it. So as you can see here, like you guys will hear me mention like the, the strike differential for things, all right? See how there's the number of contracts and then the strike width? When I say strike differential, I mean strike width. 
like when I talked about that Euro position um, being, you know, 45 pips, right? Uh, that was actually Euro yen, I guess it was. Um, 45 pips, right? Well, here you have these five minute ones, but you have these intraday ones. And again, this is not the smallest of ones. You can see that the Euro dollar is less, right? The Euro dollar is um, over here at four pips. In that time frame, right? You know, outside of those hours, it's four hours. That is 10 strike prices that it's moving. As you can see, as the duration of contract from five minute to two hour to daily to weekly, you see how they get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Two to four to 20 to 50. Like a weekly trade is great. You're like, hey, listen, I have all week to be right. But the differences in strike prices is 50 pips, right? The shorter duration, again, these are right here are by far my favorite. The two hours, it's a four pip strike differential. Okay, so why I love this shorter duration is because, again, if I can get something that's like maybe three or, you know, between three and four strike prices out of the money and the risk gets very, very low, right? If I took an at the money, I'm risking about $50. If I'm risking something that's three or four strike prices out of the money, I may risk 12 to $16. It's a better risk to reward ratio, right, during that time. And the reason why I like the two hour, uh, again, here, go across the euro dollar because this is the, the best one we're using here. You know, um, oh, you know what I did on euro yen? I'm sorry. Uh, I'll, just, I'll go back to the euro yen chart. You remember this? Well, this is like three, four hours. You see those big candles in here? You can really almost be like a sniper, right? And say, hey, listen, I know that there's going to be a lot of movement and then it's going to flatline. Why not take advantage of the time when it's going to move the most, like the fastest on average? I mean, it's not every day. Some days it's completely flat, like here. This, this pink one right here, um, I did this for my group. This pink one right here is the U.S. session. So you can see there was nothing really going on in the European session. Then, boom, two hours, two large candles starting at, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning, 55 pips on this one. So even though the Euro-Yen contract specifications, right, is saying that the strike differential on the two hours, right? The two hours is 10. That's still 10 strike prices that it moved. Okay, so for me as a kind of a technician of charting, and again, I, I pride myself on being great with risk and reward. If, and you guys can do the math in your head. Even if I did nothing but take the strike price off when it became at the money, because we all know at the money is $50, uh, approximately $50, right? If I risk $12 or say $15, and then I took the position off early when it was just as the strike price, I'm still able to get my like one to three risk to reward ratio type position versus you know something out of the money that I got to take a lot more risk on. That if I'm wrong in an at the money, I'm losing approximately $50. If I'm wrong in a time frame where I expect there to be a lot of movement, I lose $15 per contract. There's a little bit different there. So it's a game, but I prefer these smaller contracts myself, again, because the, the width of strikes is so small, right? Um, and again, this is with spot. You guys can roll down. You can see what the knockouts look like. And again, knockouts are different contracts. Here's that range that I mentioned as well. The thing that I like about these is you typically have, again, a smaller, because you have, you know, it's a spread because there's, it's covered on both sides. This is nice because you don't have these gigantic durations because they're, they're, they're in touch with what's happening right now. So if it is going to be a longer duration trade for me, like if I'm setting something Sunday night or Monday, I lean over here because you're not getting those exaggerated strike differentials. If it's an intraday target for me, I'm all over these two hour binaries. I just love these things. I just, they're just, in my eyes, it's the best, it's the best single product that Natix has is the two hour binary. I absolutely love them. More so than say the five minutes. Five minutes are quick and I love those that trade at night, but without a doubt, the two hours are my favorite. Followed by longer durations, I'm over in the knockout realm. And I do look at call spreads as well. I don't want to make, you know, make it seem like I don't look at those. I do actually use call spreads as well too. All right, so hopefully that answered your question. All right, yeah, thank I know we're way, way over, so I'll let yeah, you wrap it over. It's because it's because some guy was talking in the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, guys, uh, with that said, make sure you mark your calendars off for next week. Don't forget this contest. I'm gonna definitely do it. I'm gonna have all my students do it as well. I think it's a great opportunity, and thank you for Natix for putting something together like this. Um, you guys can see the results here. I think it's great. I want to point out the terms and conditions just to make sure we all understand the rules are over here at the C terms. Um, and again, uh, any other questions that you guys have? because we did go fast and I do talk quick. You guys are more than welcome to email me, uh, support at keeptradingsimple.com, and I'll do my best to get those answered. If not, I'll see you guys next week on Election Tuesday, and uh, good trading this week. You guys take care.